Good day everyone, it is Quirty Afro here. Welcome back to another video. We're in Train Simulator 2019 and today, finally, I am looking at something that everyone's been shouting at me since I've come back making videos, which is great for everyone, yay, hurrah. Uh, it is the Just Trains S8 London Underground stock for the Metropolitan Line on the London to Aylesbury extension or the route available from Just Trains. Uh, you don't need the Chiltern Main Lines route to make this work. You just need the London to Aylesbury. But if you do have the Chiltern Main Lines route, all you do is you just get the extension and then you can run it on, have scenarios running on the actual, on the on this part of the route that goes all the way up to Amersham. Uh, it's something that everyone's been obviously wanting me to play. I've been looking at this as something in my own time, you know, I follow different things and different developments and this was definitely one of them that I was like, oh, I'll keep an eye out on it and see how it progresses. Uh, followed it on the uh, on the Facebook page of Just Trains and they always were like posting out different pictures and stuff like it of it in development. So I'm very eager to try the product itself now out. I'm doing a scenario from uh, Harrow on the Hill to Amersham on this like clear sky day. I think this is one of the shorter scenarios. I will probably at some point cover some more videos in this train on this route, as well as uh, I know people have started to make it compatible with the virtual district lines, which I will try and do at some point as well. So people wondering to do it on the virtual district line, do it on the district line. At some point, I shall see about doing it. And I know people have patched it to get like an S7 sort of length unit, which is all good. I'm, I don't expect any less from the community. Good afternoon, driver. Please prepare the unit and depart. This should be a nice and simple run up to Amersham. Right, the cab here of the S8 stock Bombardier's uh, glorious Movia family of trains. This is not. Uh, people think that the Aventures and this are kind of related. They might share some things, but they are completely two different platforms. This is the Movia platform, which I think is to do with more of their kind of different metro sets that they build for different countries, etc. So this is obviously the one that they use for the UK for the tube. Um, I do like the cab. I think it's very airy, very spacious. It, you know, it's nice compared to kind of some of the older cabs you got on the London Underground. It's very nice. Uh, the thing we have to do to get going is we have to put this key into on. We then slap this into tripcock, which is kind of like our forward position. Uh, you can put it into restricted manual forward, where if you like have a if you trip the um, if you like pass a red signal, do a spad, uh, it will give you a warning shout at you and then you put into restricted manual capped at 10 miles per hour and you proceed forward and i think to reset that system you essentially have to wait three minutes or pass two clear aspect signals or caution signals and it should allow you to go back into trip cop we have obviously our lovely tcms here on the side on the, on the side which is uh, simulated to a good enough point where you can do things like obviously your destination stuff and see the kind of station screen but that's pretty much it uh my duty number i don't know what my duty number is but i'm just going to make it up and uh, make up my handheld radio number don't care but the train number we do have of 413 so i'm a uh, I'm going to put that in, confirm that. That is uh, giving me an alarm there because I've not uh, put my uh, Deadman's handle in the kind of override position. Uh, obviously, in the S-Stock, uh, because there's no DSD plate down here to do a kind of vigilance system, the kind of vigilance for a kind of chew driver in the S-Stock is that you have to hold the you have to hold the handle. And if you don't, if you let go of it, it'll just go into go into that position. And you can press E and hold it if you want to be kind of realistic and hold the handle while driving, which um, I'm not going to do. Or you can just press Shift E and it kind of locks it into that position, which is very nice. Uh, destination screen, we're going to put in, I think we're stopping at every stop. So it's a slow service up to Amish. Uh, yeah, that's a slow service. So I'm going to do number six, confirm that. And then now it kind of knows... And then if I give door release on the right, which press T and O, another kind of unit, 
I like that it uses two buttons to kind of open doors, which I really do like. I think the class 315 by Wagons, and even the 313 uses that kind of like you press two buttons to open to give release. I like that. You know, it's a simple little touch because it kind of makes you feel like you're pressing the two buttons that you would press if you were in a real cab in real life, which is quite nice. Of course, you have the nicer station kind of screen here which is nice gives a it shows you what doors are kind of released nothing else kind of really works with skip station just only destination code and then manual message cis message control panel kind of works but nothing really on here kind of works it's just there kind of visually uh, you can hear the doors close by themselves that is the kind of auto close kind of thing but again i can just give release even though they're still released but obviously there's no passengers that are going to come up and just open it even though that could have been a cool feature to be added do monitors that we have uh obviously static obviously they're not going to be dynamic uh headlights is one thing uh i was kind of like i was I got into this unit i was like where's the switch and it's actually just all automatic as you can see the destination matrix all set up for one free amersham uh i think it should say yep yeah, all stations that's all good but let's get going and I'll probably show you guys a bit more around with the kind of uh, the, the passenger views and stuff like that. So I'm going to press R to close the doors or as you can hear, the doors are closing by themselves. Now, when you're closing the doors, wait for the interlock light and then you wait for the release light door buttons to go out. And then we can start going. There is a glitch or some sort of bug that if you go if you proceed with the interlock light and the release door lights illuminated it creates a bug where <laughs> when you get to the next station release the doors it only releases the doors on the first coach which i've seen videos of people having the issue where they're just opening the giving door release and the the front coach is basically just the only coach that opens all the doors so that's just something if you have that sort of glitch just be careful of when you depart. Just wait for the red lights, the door release lights to de-illuminate and then you can proceed and then you won't have that and then you won't have that glitch. Now, one thing I've noticed, I've played a little bit around with this S8 stock. Uh, I've uh, done a, you know, a little, I've not done the full sort of length of one route. I've kind of just driven it a bit to kind of get used to it and kind of, you know, get a little bit familiar before I actually made a video of it. Uh, I have to say the speed is really drastically different because obviously we're kind of having to adjust here to sort of subway tube kind of speed instead of mainline sort of speeds. It's like 30 miles per hour and then 50 miles per hour, which if you're doing that in like mainline stock where, you know, on most stuff on train sim, which we're expecting to do those sort of higher speeds, it feels a lot slower when you jump on this and when you're driving on this route and I'm guessing on the virtual district lines if you're driving on that route it's going to feel a lot slower and that's something I've had to really like get used to because I'm just used to that sort of speed and then obviously this is going fast for a tube train but not really for a sort of <laughs> mainline train and the thing is, right now we're going to go up to 50 miles per hour here once we pass the speed board. And I will literally put it in 100% and it will not go, you know, crazy. Like a normal train would try, you know, go up to like 90 or whatever, or 75. This will literally take its time and go up to 90 and, I mean, to 50. So that's one thing I've noticed. That's a, such a weird kind of thing because obviously it's a lot slower than what, what I'm normally used to in train sim. I think one of the biggest criticisms for this kind of um, DLC, uh, overall I I do like it, uh, is, I, is the motor sounds. I think some people have some sort of issues with the kind of way they do sound. Uh, I think it's normally when it's uh, accelerating up, it sh it's kind of goes into the kind of higher kind of speed motor sounds a little too quickly. And there's a little bit less of a build-up or something like that. I've seen people like, complaining about the, the, the traction motors. But I think it's kind of okay for what it is. Right. Line up with the S8 board. That should be fine. There we go. The door sounds. The door animations. That's one thing I'm uh, That's one thing I'm going to uh, 
kind of showcase because I do love these. These doors, the sounds are correct, the closing animations correct, everything is synchronized because, you know, most stuff, like, you know, if it's from Armstrong Powerhouse or whatever, the doors are, like, perfect, but most kind of doors, you know, with Dovetail Game stuff are just not synchronized properly, and this is one of these trains that I just love that the doors are synchronized with the sounds. So if I go now and close the doors, it sounds exactly, and then the clunk, it's it's all just done really well in terms of the sounds. And that kind of, when you're given power there, love that little kind of gush of air. But look, I've given 100%. It doesn't really feel fast. But then again, we have to remember this is this is a tube train. This isn't this isn't a mainline train. So you know. <laughs> so I guess other things I can kind of walk you through the cab. Um it, one thing with this, obviously not everything is simulated, uh, but you have things that are like pressable still so these kind of radio buttons associated with this kind of uh, Motorola unit I don't know anything about the kind of radio system that the tube uses but these are pressable but they don't really do anything same with these cab to cab PEA public address they're pressable which I like um, I hate when you have some cabs you go into and literally there's so many buttons and you press them and nothing happens at least there's a little bit of feedback there's a noise and I appreciate that. They didn't have to do that. But they've added that in. And I like it. You know, most of the stuff isn't simulated. Most of the stuff is. You know. The brakes on this unit, fantastic. Like, some of the best brakes I've used. And the thing is, you can leave the speed, like, pretty high till pretty, you know, you can... You can uh, there we go. Like, see right now, it kind of felt like I was going fast, but then look at that. Stops literally on the dot. It's so responsive. It's It's got to be. It's the S-Dot. It's tube stock. Tube trains have, like, really good acceleration and really good, like, braking on the newer units, I mean. And to be honest, I don't know people. Um, I don't know what the people's opinions are of the S stocks appearance, but I kind of, I kind of like it. Um, I think it's a interesting looking sort of unit, uh, but I, I do, I do like it. Um, I think it's, uh, it's not the most, it's not the ugliest kind of thing, but it, it holds its own. There we go. Let's pop back here. There we go. Give a close now. I think there might be somewhere where you can disable uh, uh, door control. No. Okay. No. You, you just you just leave it in that. But tell me, guys, what you guys think about this uh, S8. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinions in the comment section below. As I said, I think of the things I've been seeing uh, people complain most about is some of the sounds, but not all of it. I think most of the sounds are actually pretty decent, and it sounds like I've been on the S-Dock a lot of times, and it does sound like this, but some of the things, obviously, maybe limitations of what they could record or how they've stitched up together, because... It doesn't sound fully kind of one-to-one. -one. But I like this. It's a, it's a good attempt, and uh, it's just nice and refreshing to have some, you know, an official... I think this is probably one of the first, like, official payware kind of underground kind of modern stuff, modern kind of underground stock. I think anything else has been kind of like the 1938 stock. But then, obviously, you have something like the freeware D stock for the virtual district lines, which I probably prefer to drive that more. And the sounds are, like, pretty damn good on those. Set a little bit. 
going at my pleasurely 50. But all these kind of stuff, uh, like trip reset works, uh, I'm not too sure what ice mode is. I'd hazard the guess that it's something to do with the weather. <laughs> Maybe automatic sanding or whatever. That's SDO for the doors, but I don't think that works. There's traction tests, traction trips, orcs on and off. It's all kind of all there and present. And all pressable. Bam, but this braking literally like we're coming in at 30, which is the kind of normal speed you kind of do come in in a in a normal mainline train, so and you have to be I think you have to you have to trust the brakes on this unit because it feels like you're going fast and then I just overshot <laughs> overshot it. We'll reverse. But as I was saying, uh, let's see if reverse. I've never actually put it into reverse. There we go. You have to kind of trust. Oh crap. Ah. Oh good, oh, it, it updates it, nice. Uh, you have to kind of trust the brakes, because uh, they are pretty good. But there, I kind of, uh, I was a little bit, a little bit cheeky. Let's just get into position again. There we go. Release the doors. We've got passenger uh, views as well. And you can just flick between the coaches at your desire. I like also that the doors open in the passenger view, which is just a nice touch because most trains don't really have this feature, but it's just nice so you don't have to be going like into the free cam to kind of see them all open or so it's quite nice. A pretty good pretty good detailed interior. Uh, some of the seats do look a little bit flat. Well, I think they are curved or whatever, but I think the texturing on the seats could be a little bit better. But everything else is pretty accurate. And I like the map. The tube maps are pretty nice. Uh, kind of definition. Nice adverts, which is nice. The in-board, in-display PIS kind of matrix display is just static. Just says Metropolitan Line. Which is a shame. Right, let's uh, do a little internal departure. I'm going to wait a little bit because of that door glitch thing. And let's rock and roll. Oh, hello. Oh, what? I'm, in <laughs> I'm a protected manual. So let's just stop that. Slap that in tripcock. There we go. Perfect. And the thing is, when faults do go wrong, uh, as I said, they do pop up on the TCMS and it will give you like an instruction of what to do or how to drive the unit and what to do to kind of rectify and get back into the kind of tripcock mode. Uh, definitely, as I said, if you spad, you'd have to go into restricted manual. You'd have to be in that for like at least three minutes or pass like two clear signals. And the max you have is 10 miles per hour. And I did try and record a video yesterday on another scenario where I did pass a signal at danger. And uh, let's just, 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 just say my uh, uh, the distance between, I think I was like quite a while away from Rickmansworth and it just took too long and I was like I give up on this video I failed it I failed you guys uh, scrap it and uh, let's just go for take two and even though I messed up there in the prior station but that was kind of kind of easily rectified I didn't really trip anything I just I just um, I just needed to reverse a bit coming up to north uh, northward Well, I think, I, to be honest, for me, the sounds sound pretty adequate, you know. 
I don't see anything kind of wrong. You know, it's not perfect, but it's it's definitely doable. Right, nicely does it. And oh, hello. Thank you. Whoa. Yeah, some of the texturing on these, like, some of them, like, are fully red, and then some of them are, like, black. And then, like, I have I had some, like, texturing bugs where, like, the back, the, the red would be black, and there's, there's, there's some weird kind of things with it, but generally, all good. Oh, I do like this. It's quite a photogenic uh, sort of, uh, it's quite nice. Yeah, my doors have closed, but not really that bothered. There we go. Right, let's uh, give in to lock. There we go, wait for the red to go out, and we're ready to go. One thing I can actually show you at the next station is that the cab doors actually open as well, which is a nice touch and a nice little feature. What I like about this unit is that it has um, it has these kind of nice little features that are not really like stand out, but like they're just, just they're just nice. You know, you find them and you're like, oh, that's a cute touch, or that's something really cool that's added. So I do appreciate certain things. Like I can go over like you obviously have some cab controls here with the heating i don't think this is simulated because i don't really hear any sort of cab uh, or fan fan sounds in the cab but at least i can turn them i think the brake gauge does react and change ato start and ato stop i don't think that will ever be in use in the game unless they kind of updated to once in real life the kind of line goes ato mode i don't know cab yeah these are all fine I don't think the cab wash, yeah, the cab, the the windscreen wash doesn't work, but the windscreen wipers do. Right, let's slow down a little bit. There we go. Got sensitive edge, which I'm not sure what it does, but then the alarm acknowledge. If you do have an alarm on the TCMS, then just acknowledge it with that, and it just silences the kind of audible alarm that you'd get when it's shouting at you. And then, yeah, you just have some more door release buttons. I don't think these ones... Oh, selective door. Yeah, that, that works. And PA doesn't... Yeah, that works. Nice. Next station is a Moor Park. All right, let's try and do a... Let's try and do this. Which I'm uh, a bit hesitant to do, but oh no 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 no! Well, I tried. <laughs> uh, I tried. I'm going to be doing more reversing in this video than anything. There we go. And one thing I like as well is that the train isn't attached to the... The doors aren't attached to the platform. So, like, all doors will open. No matter how, like, far out. Similar to the kind of U uh, Frankfurt kind of U-Bahn kind of trains. Where you can just open the doors anyway, depending... Doesn't matter where you are. Uh, let's go back to Tripcock. That's fine. I can show you these door opening things with the cab doors, which is kind of cool. Uh, I, you can't get into lock if you leave these open, so you have to have them open to... Uh, 
you have to have them open. I mean, you have to have them closed to get, like, to continue moving. But I like that you can open them. That's just a nice little neat touch there. Uh, let's close that. Man, it's so photogenic. I do like it. Get a little nice... Something like that. Yeah, that should be cool. Anyway, let's close the doors. Let's get going on our journey here. A nice sound of the compressor there. I like it. Oh, I just noticed that little clock there. Nice little underground styled clock. I've not actually fully driven on the London to Aylesbury route, so this is my kind of first time actually checking it out, or really on this section of it. Right, this is the area where I kind of did a spad when I tried my first take of this video, so uh, I need, uh, hopefully we'll get greens. Because I think we, we switch track, because if we stay on these tracks it goes off onto the Watford branch and we then have to cross over so we can stay on the kind of Amersham branch. So I need, I won't go too fast because we're obviously crossing over going at 25 miles per hour. But we should get green. Oh no! There, you can see that little yellow signal there, kind of like a distant signal telling me that the next signal is a red. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious here. One thing that would have been kind of nice to have, I guess, is announcements. You'd think that's something they, they could have like gotten and inputted into the TCMS and you could have played kind of different stuff. I think it would have been uh, quite cool to have something like that. Oh, and we've got signal change. Very nice. Or even if 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 you couldn't get audible kind of passenger announcements, it would have been cool if uh, they updated the uh, if they updated the kind of internal matrix display to kind of change or reflect the station you're at. That would have been kind of something nice to have. Right, fully crossed over now. And now we're sharing tracks with uh, Chilton Main Lines. We now got a 60 mile per hour. I don't know if I think it should be able to reach 60, I think. But I have to say, the texturing and stuff of the unit, I uh, can't really fault it. Like, it's really detailed. But again, do let me know in the comments what you guys think of it. If any of you guys who have got it and have played around in it. Uh, I definitely would love to see and try it out on the uh, virtual district lines. I know someone's made a S7 variant of it. So I'm eager to give it a go on that. Because this kind of route is very... This kind of stretch of the Metropolitan line is very long. While the kind of station stops and stuff like that on uh, on the virtual district lines is very kind of you know more metro kind of work all right 25 mile now we're pretty good just let it coast as we come into rickmansworth but this cab is spacious though look at some of these Subsurface stock drivers in there still are just you can even stand in it and it look pretty comfortable. I 
I'm definitely not doing another external arrival because uh, that just did not work out for me. Oh, the fans do work. That's something I was a little bit wrong there on. Why does it say I'm at Moore Park? Oh no, there we go. <laughs> Changed. But yeah, the, uh, the fans do work, which is a nice thing. Could put it in... Uh, I'll leave it in auto low. That's nice. And you can see there the brake gauge changed a little bit as well, which is so... Yeah, it's uh, everything, as I said, some things are simulated and some things aren't, but everything is kind of like tactile and you can press it, which is nice in itself. I prefer just having that kind of ghost button if it's there and you just can press it rather than not having anything, just having buttons that you visually look at, if you know what I mean. Right. I know people have also made scenarios for like the Isle of Wight with the S8, which uh, <laughs> that'll be kind of interesting to do. Uh, and I don't know where else people have. You could probably fling it on any kind of sort of thing and have a go at it. see a saint stock or walk through or air conditioned it's not a bad train to actually be on like uh it's such an improvement from the kind of like d stock and c stock in terms of like you know when you when you hop on board in central london and they're so frequent now and it's it's like a lot better obviously i do prefer like the c stock and the d stock as in terms of they're like very characterful trains and the s stock is kind of sterile and a bit but I, I still, I think they look pretty cool. I think they're pretty quirky trains. And they're very fast to accelerate. Like, I mean, they, they go. And there's a lot of stop-start when you're, you know, especially like when you're between, I guess, anywhere along the circle line around in the central section where you're going around, like, you just stop starting continuously. And to be honest, they fit quite a lot of trains uh, in on, on these kind of subsurface lines in the kind of central section. You know, even there's no ATO right now. It's all manually driven still. But the kind of distances that trains are kind of like path together is like you could have a train literally pulling out another train pulling in. Kind of similar to how you get on the Victoria line with ATO. But this is actually still like manually driven and manual signals. And the signals are just so close to each other. It's pretty incredible actually. But then that results in a lot of stopping in tunnels and waiting for trains to kind of move and go. So it's a little bit, it's not as like seamless. I guess with ATO, it, you, it will always be moving unless it needs to stop. So, you know, I don't know. We, which I'm curious to see how it'll look like with ATO. But for now, like, to be honest, it's a pretty frequent service. So it kind of begs to question why ATO is even needed if you can literally jump on a train every like one or two minutes on the subsurface lines in the central section like is there even any point of having ATO all the way out here on the metropolitan line in all fairness not really like in the central sections I, 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 I see the appeal and the point Right, surely would. Nice. 
turn. This platform's long. See, I need to. I think one one thing I need to practice is this kind of stopping distance because these are quite long trains. But the speeds, I need to get used to these kind of uh, speeds, which just I'm just not used to. Like when driving other trains in uh, in uh, in train simulator, I'm just not used to this kind of uh, stopping kind of pattern. It's so close and so tight. But you know, something to learn. Something to learn. That looks so good. I can't really get a good kind of screenshot because these borders and markers and fences and stuff is all in the way. Right, stay clear of those. Yeah, my favorite kind of thing here is the kind of doors. I, I just, I don't know why, but I, I just, I like, I like that they're actually simulated and synchronized perfectly. I do agree with everyone talking about the motors of when you accelerate. They do sound a little weird and a little off. But I still think it's a pretty good attempt. And you get you get sparks from the shoe gear, which uh, I do like. I appreciate that. It's nice having if we can have it on the pantographs, we should definitely have it on the shoe gear, kind of like third rail or fourth rail trains. Because to be honest, they shoe gear probably sparks a lot more violently, or can spark a lot more violently than pantograph and overhead wires. But yeah, next station is Chalfont and Latimer. I think you can drive off into the Chesh Chesham branch. I'm not too sure. There's obviously no scenarios that go to Chesham, but that you can drive into it a little bit. I don't think it goes all the way to Chesham, but would have been nice if that was like included in. They could have maybe foreseen that they were going to release this Ness 8 stock and maybe do like. They could have done the Watford branch, I think, but then actually, to be honest, they would have to. No, they, they could have actually done it to Watford. That would have been quite a nice little treat there. Have the Watford branch, Amersham branch. Even maybe the, Ox the Oxbridge branch would have been nice. But still, to Amersham's a quite a nice journey. And, you know, you have all the way, you can go all the way down to Finchley Road, I think. And obviously, I think people wanted. Uh, the southern kind of terminus of Baker Street. I think that would have been really kind of cool to have in if it went as far as Baker Street. Like, I'm not too bothered about not it going to Oldgate because that then is kind of like doing the whole kind of section between Baker Street and Oldgate. But I think Baker Street it could have been could have been put in. All right, let's coast a bit as we come into the approach for Chalfon and Latimer. But overall, I do like this product. I, I I do like it. I think it maybe is a little bit on the pricier side for an add-on, especially as well. I don't really think it's a very advanced thing like an ad they call it their advanced kind of well i think just trains use the word advance very loosely on some of their products but i genuinely think more could have been done to make it an advanced product i think a lot more stuff with the tcms could have been included but you know it is what it is i just like that there's some sort of you know underground related product available for train sim it's always a good day when that's when that's the kind of case. Right. Yeah, I kind of need to get used to these kind of breaking points. And there we go. We are now at Chalfon and Latimer, change for trains to Chesham. The next station is Amersham, where this train terminates. 
Let's see if I can maybe squeeze some sort of screenshot here, but I'm kind of doubting it. Maybe, I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. Who knows? Let's do external departure. As we depart for our final station, which is Amersham. Alright, give that a little wait, give that a little wait, and it should be fine now. Man, it just looks slow. But I guess that's kind of like the actual speed of an S dock. Like it's not like it should. It, it should look like it's accelerating a lot faster. If you know what I mean, because it should accelerate faster. It's a really quick accelerating train, but then probably only up to twenty or thirty, which isn't a really fast speed. <laughs> I don't know. Again, leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. What you think about this S8 by Just Trains? I'd love to hear you guys' opinion about it. I do like it. I definitely think it's worth the buy if you're a massive London Underground sort of fan. Uh, if you're a Metropolitan fan or if you're an S Stock fan. Definitely something worth looking into getting. Oh, we have. Oh, we have two yellows. Is that a red? No, because it was a green with a yellow on that last one, and that was a red. So I'm going to slow down because I don't want to spad. You know, things have been going okay in this video, except for the kind of few overruns I did, but those were rectified. I really do not want to be rectifying a spad. Because that means we're going to have to drive in restricted manual forward. No, protect. No, protected manual forward. Restricted. Restricted. There's two. There's protected manual and there's restricted manual. Which I'm the protected manual. I'm guessing is when ATO is uh, kind of operational, and there's no kind of conventional conventional signalling. You just slap it in protected and it gives you the information on the screen of what to kind of like keep up to. Oh, that's, that's a yellow, that's fine. Now, I would suspect that the next signal is a red then. Well, I would hope it's a red. I completely do not know how to read, uh, read uh, underground signals. I think they're very similar to normal conventional signals, but... Because it's kind of like a split signal when you have two sets. Like, the bottom one shows you what the next one's coming up f if you need to, like... When we were crossing the junction at Rick's, Rick Mansworth, uh, and that is a red... Damn. Yeah, when we were crossing the point at Rickmansworth, it had a green on the top set and then a yellow on the uh, on the bottom, which reflected that the it was a red signal next because we were turning off. But I don't know. Approved. Yes. Oh, I started to roll back there. Damn. So I'm guessing, yeah, we're going into platform two of Amersham. I do like the sound of this, um, this handle. It's just like, it's unnecessarily loud and then, you know, I like that. Like sometimes you want to hear the thing that you're actually moving most in the cab and it's good. On some trains, you can hear the kind of like you know selection of notches or whatever, and then some of them it's some of them are not really good. And this this one, you can really hear it, and I appreciate that because 
it's the only thing really that you're doing the most in the cabin you want to hear it except when you're kind of like pressing buttons Right, our final stop of Rickman, uh, of, um, obviously a Rickman's worth, Amersham. Where this train terminates. And I'm guessing most people, well, I see most people, uh, can I... What's the destination thing? What the hell? I'm, being I'm trying to do two things here, multitask, which is not going well for me. Where the hell's this board? That's fine. Most people... Uh, where's the... How's this destination thing? Yeah, there we go. So now I'd probably like change it to, I don't know, let's say Baker Street, all stations uh, from Amersham Slow. So I'd put 22, oh god, 228, confirm that. And because most people, I see when I see most S stocks coming into like the terminal station, they already have the the thing set up basically <laughs> so i just did it there quick i tried to do it while stopping but it just the multitasking there while driving in train sim does not work out perfectly good work driver that is all sorted well guys i hope you've i generally hope you've enjoyed this kind of little first look here off the just trains advanced uh, s8 stock uh, I definitely like it. Uh, we did have some interesting kind of things happening in this video with some station overruns, but you know, showcased a bit of the reversing and it's all good. Uh, maybe I might do when I do in the next one, I do an intentional spad and show you the actual faulting system where it will show up on the TCMS and then you have to react to it and then do that kind of whole scenario and procedure. But I generally like this. I think it's a pretty cool train to drive. The sounds are pretty decent. Some of the things are a little bit inaccurate with how it does sound when accelerating up. But I can really, I can forgive that because most of the other stuff like the door sounds, the, the actual chimes and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the door kind of button presses, the, the, the handle. Everything just sounds really kind of nice and genuine. Uh, shame that there isn't any sort of onboard announcements uh the matrix displays are pretty nice and generally it rides really well and kind of reflects of how kind of reactive it is with the acceleration and the deacceleration because obviously it is a kind of metro kind of train so i i i generally do like it tell me your thoughts in the comments down below if you're going to get this what do you think of it do you think it's bad do you think it's good i think it's okay i think it's above average uh, i don't think it's like average i think it, they it shows that they did do some work to you know make it as best as they can so i have to say i like it i'll leave the link down below so you can check it out on just trains and uh other than that i you know i'll definitely look into doing some more videos with the s8 and potential s7 maybe on virtual district lines of uh, whoever's released that on the communities for the community forums or wherever i can get it downloaded from but other than that guys thank you for watching it was a bit of a shambles with some of the overruns, I do apologise, but um, it was my kind of first proper time doing the full kind of route. I've just fiddled around with it previously just a little bit, so uh, I still need to get used to the kind of braking and stuff like that. But other than that, I had a blast. I hope you guys had a blast too. I'll see you guys in another video. Take care. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.